Hello, my name is Michelle Bird. I'm the Public Affairs Director here at Lamar County. Um, I have been in my role as a Public Affairs Director since 2016 and part of Larimer County government since 2012. Um, I am a native of Larimer County. I was born and raised in Loveland. So I have been here in this community um, my entire life. So I am really excited today to share with you a little bit of my own knowledge, um, knowledge about Larimer County in general, but also knowledge about what a county is, what are, what are the authorities of a county. Um, I often say that county government is sometimes the most unseen level, gov level of government or most un- let's see, misunderstood level of government. We learn about municipal government, um, state and local government, and federal government during our civs classes um, throughout our, our K through 12 education. But often we really don't learn much about county government. Um, when I took my job here with Lamar County back in 2012, I had to Google search, what does a county commissioner do? Um, and I say that with, with the knowledge of, I, I had a degree in political science. So it's not uncommon for most folks in our community, um, and not just in our community, but, but statewide and nationwide, to not truly understand what it is that a county government does, what makes it different than state and local government, um, I mean, state and municipal government. And so I'm excited to just share some of that with you today. So let's get started with our presentation. Let me share my screen really quick. All right, so as I said, today I'm just gonna talk about kind of the basics. Our Civics 101 per se about county government and we'll share a little bit about specifically Larimer County government. So let's start off with the easiest question. What is a county? So counties in Colorado are constitutional subdivisions of state government. So what does that really mean for you and me? First of all, it means that the boundaries of the counties um, are outlined in the state statute, which were drawn by the General Assembly. So Larimer County is one of the original 17 counties um, that was established when Colorado became a state in 1876. Um, most of you probably know that Colorado's nickname is the Centennial State, and that's because Colorado became the 38th state in 1876, which was the 100 year anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Um, Larimer County itself was named after General William Larimer Jr. Um, he was known as the founder of Denver. Um, Little known fact is that we don't believe he actually ever visited the lands of Lamar County. Um, after he moved on from founding Denver, he moved to Kansas. He was a Kansas state senator. And actually his nickname is General is not because he was part of our US Army. He was actually a general in the Pennsylvania militia. He was actually born in, in Pennsylvania. Um, Larimer County, as we were talking about the boundaries that, that were constitutionally created, originally Larimer County encompassed all of Larimer County that we know today, as well as Jackson County. However, at some point, um, the state legislature decided that the county seat, um, which today is Fort Collins, the county seat cannot be any farther away than something like a day and a half horse ride. So if, if any part of the county was, it was gonna take longer than a day and a half to travel there um, by horse from the county seat or from there to the county seat, um, that that county was too large. And so that, at that time they decided to split up Larimer County um, at the, at the um, continental divide, excuse me. Um, and that's where we got Jackson County from. And actually speaking, I have some, I've just ran a bit of information here. Speaking of county seats, um, the original county seat of Larimer, Collier, of Larimer County was Camp Collins. Um, and that's kind of where LaPorte is today, if you know where LaPorte is. However, as many people know the story, in 1864, a flood on the Poudre um, kind of encouraged settlers to move maybe a few miles south of the river so that didn't happen again. Um, and then the town was, actually planted, the town of Fort Collins was platted in 1876. And when they platted um, the town before, before it was really settled, 
they did designate a block of land for the county courthouse or for county services, but only um, if the county seat became Fort Collins. So Fort Collins actually became the county seat of Larimer County before it became incorporated um, as an official municipality. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about what it means to be incorporated or unincorporated. But I think it's fun to talk about the relationship between Fort Collins and Lamar County having established even before Fort Collins was a municipality. Um, it's good history that goes way back. So going back to what is a county? Um, initially, counties were really created to carry out those programs and policies at the state. Um, that were created at the state level, but they wanted to carry out at a local level. Um, of course, those, those programs and services have you know, expanded over the last one, 100 years. Um, second of all, all those authorities and powers that counties have are actually constitutionally or statutorily created. So what this means is that any authority that counties have must be explicitly prescribed to counties in our constitution or in the Colorado revised statutes. So for example, um, if Fort Collins, we'll use Fort Collins as an example a lot to, to counterpoint what a county is. If Fort Collins, let's say, was having some type of graffiti problem, maybe they were having graffiti in the parks. Um, they, as a city council, an incorporated city council that is home ruled, um, they can go as a city council and decide they want to enact some type of graffiti ordinance to make, you know, graffiti illegal in public places or something along those lines. Um, and then, you know, problems, not that the problem is solved, but at least they then have a way to enforce um, not letting graffiti get out of control. However, if the Colorado Constitution or the revised statutes do not explicitly say, explicitly say, um, counties have authority over regulating graffiti, then counties cannot um, create an ordinance to regulate graffiti in the unincorporated areas of the county. So what that means is anytime that we are having some type of community issue or there, there needs to be a government intervention of whatever kind, um, counties cannot do so unless it is prescribed in the constitution. So if we were having that graffiti issue um, and the state constitution said, did not give us that authority, we would have to go through the state legislature, go through that process to get counties that authority and power before we were able to regulate um, graffiti or, or anything else for that matter. So that's kind of the foundation of what is a county. First, the boundaries are constitutionally created. And second, the authorities and the powers are also constitutionally created. All right, trivia time. I hope you all can take about 30 seconds and jot down um, all of the incorporated municipalities you can think of in Larimer County. So we talked of Fort Collins as becoming an incorporated um, municipality, I think it was in 1867 or something like that. Um, so there are seven incorporated municipalities in Lamar County. Take a few seconds and jot down as many of them as you can think of. And when I come back, we will go through this. All right, we'll give you about five more seconds to finish your brainstorm. So the seven municipalities, incorporated municipalities in Lamar County are one, Fort Collins, two, Loveland, three, Estes Park, four, Burford, five, Wellington, six, there's a portion of Johnstown in Lamar County, and seven, there's a portion of, of Windsor in Larimer County. And I forgot to mention, there's also Berthoud isn't fully in Larimer County either. It does um, go into Weld County and Boulder County a little bit. So we have, um, 
we have four fully incorporated um, municipalities in Larimer County, and then three of our municipalities are split among different counties. Um, some of you might have written listed places like Livermore, Redfeather, Drake, Glenhaven. Um, these are absolutely communicate communities, unique communities in our um, in our county, um, but they are considered unincorporated. That means they don't have an official governing structure like municipalities do. Um, there's no city or town council. They don't have a city or town charter. Um, the residents that live in the unincorporated parts of Larimer County and also those unincorporated communities, um, the jurisdiction there is actually Larimer County. Um, but many folks actually think county commissioners or what does the county do? They think it's the city council for the unincorporated areas. And that's not necessarily true. It is true to an extent, but that is not all that counties do. So before we get into what counties do, let's talk a little bit about Oh, there was the question. We already missed it, but we'll move along. Um, what is a county? So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. Most people know quite a bit about municipalities. I would assume that most of you live in a municipality, at either before Collins or Loveland, Estes, Berthoud, Wellington. Um, but there will be some folks here that, that do not live in an incorporated part of the county but most of you understand how municipalities work. So we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of municipality and a county, just to get, give you guys a good idea of what the difference is. First of all, and we talked about this a little bit already, counties are constitutionally created. So um, if we, for some reason, if Colorado wanted to create a new county, um, it would have to go through first the state legislature, and then it would have to be ratified in the constitution by the people of Colorado. Um, that's how we would have to go through the process to get a county. However, for municipalities, all you really need is a vote of the people that are in that municipality. So um, at some point, the people here in Camp Collins, which we now know as Fort Collins, decided, hey, we want to be a home ruled local government and we're gonna have a, a vote here, the people to see if that's what the people want. And the people of Camp Collins, now Fort Collins decided, yes, that is what we wanna do. And they wrote themselves a charter, which um, is what kind of you guys follow as ordinances, um, your city council follows as well. Um, and that what that's what really makes a municipality. Um, again, counties are constitutionally created. Two powers, so we talked already about county powers and how we have to go through the state constitution or state statutes. Um, however, municipalities, for the most part, um, are home rule here in, here in Colorado. That's not always true, but most municipalities have a charter that they follow. Um, at the same time, counties, for the most part, um, are constitutional counties. There's exceptions to every rule. Um, there are two counties in Colorado that are actually home rule. You would have to go through a vote of the people in order to become a home rule county. Um, our neighbors to the east, Weld County, are a home rule county. Um, and on the same side, municipalities can also be constitutional municipalities. That means that they don't have a charter. Um, they, they are granted the same authorities from the constitution. Estes Park is a constitutional um, municipality. They still have a, a city council though, I'm sorry, a town council. Um, that does, you know, do the governing there in, in Estes Park. Primary sources of funding. So this is a big difference between a municipality and a county. Let me show you a graph so that you guys can get a better visual. Um, this first graph is what, where um, counties get their funding, right? So if you look at this one, it looks like it's based on a resident of Loveland. So I am a resident of Loveland. We can pretend this is what my property tax is. Um, counties do get the majority of their funding from property tax. So you can see me as a, as a resident of Loveland and in Larimer County, a resident of Larimer County, about 50% fi about of my property taxes are actually gonna go to the school district. So school districts are also funded primarily by property taxes. Um, another quarter of my property taxes, that's what actually comes to the county um, for operations. And then another eh, 15 to 10 to 15 percent is actually going to go to the city of Loveland, my municipality. And then another 10 percent is going to go to special districts. So special districts are things like water districts, library districts, sewer districts. 
Um, there's different there's different kind of special districts um, throughout the county, and some some properties have those special districts. They're within those districts, and others do not. So every kind of tax rule looks a little bit different. However, if we're looking from the municipal side, the majority of funding for municipalities comes from sales tax. So the one on your right, um, it looks like City of Fort Collins. So City of Fort Collins resident, the majority of your sales tax goes to um, the municipality that you live in. Another 38, 40% of it goes to the state. And then there's about 10% of sales tax that does come back to the county. Um, all the sales tax here in Larimer County is designated for a specific purpose. So that does not go into our general fund. Any sales tax that we collect has to go to the specific purpose that the voters approved it for. Um, we have a few different sales tax here in Larimer County. The most common known one is our natural resources sales tax that um, buys open space and provides for that open space. Um, our, the jail has a sales tax. The Larimer County Jail has a sales tax for operational fees. Um, the ranch has a sales tax as well to help with operations. Um, I know there's a couple more, but I'm blanking on them right now. But the majority, um, again, the majority of your sales tax goes to the municipality. A small percentage comes back to the county. So that's kind of the big difference between the funding sources between a municipality and a county. Now, governing. This is um, this is where things really start to look different. Um, for a municipality, you often have a town council, a city council, a city board of trustees. They are the overarching elected body for the entire organization. Um, your town council hires your town manager or administrator typically. That administrator hires everyone underneath them, such as the police chief, um, a fire chief sometimes, you know, your head of budget, that sort of thing. However, in county government, we have 10 elected officials. Um, the Board of County Commissioners does hire a county manager, but they don't hire the sheriff, right? The sheriff is a separately elected official. They also don't hire the clerk and recorder, the person who oversees the elections. They're a separately elected official. We'll talk about those 10 elected official offices here in a, here in a bit, um, but it does make us a very different functioning organization because we have 10 elected officials instead of just having one organizational body like a town council. And then politics. This is kind of the final difference between the two here in Colorado. Um, in municipalities, elected officials do not run with a party affiliation. That does not mean they're not affiliated to a party, but your actual ballot will not have a D or an R or an I next to their name. Um, here for the county when they're running, um, they are running with a political party affiliation. So you will see a D or an R or an I um, next to their name on the ballot. So let's talk a little bit about who is the county. Trivia time again. Um, Larimer County has how many elected officials? Now, I already gave the answer away in the previous slide, so you guys should be able to get this right. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you here a few seconds just to write down the titles of the elected officials you think are in Larimer County. I've given a few away, so Board of County Commissioners, Sheriff. Um, see if you can take your 20 seconds and jot down the names of the other elected officials. And when I come back, we'll see if you're right. All right, we'll take about five more seconds, finish up, and we will talk about who are our elected officials here at Larimer County. All right, here's an org chart of Larimer County, and at the very top, of course, are our community members, those people that elected um, our elected officials into office, right? But right below that, you see our line of elected officials. In the middle, you see the Board of County Commissioners, um, and the majority of the Larimer County organization does fall underneath the Board of County Commissioners. 
However, you'll also see the seven other elected official offices um, at the same level. They do not report to the Board of County Commissioners. The Board of County Commissioners um, do not have any authority or power over these other elected officials. Um, they do have four-year terms. Actually, all 10 of them have four-year terms, um, and they're limited to three terms um, in their positions, except for the county coroner, who does not have term limits. Um, and so you'll see we have the coroner, the district attorney, the sheriff, the clerk and recorder, the assessor, the treasurer, and the surveyor. Um, through the throughout the course, um, throughout Lermer County 101, you are gonna learn more about each of these offices and you'll get to meet these elected officials. Um, but the important thing to know right now is that they, these 10 elected officials, um, they are constitutionally and statutorily independent from each other. Their powers and their duties are prescribed by state statute. As I said earlier, the county commissioners have no direct authority over the other, other elected officials in the county, except one thing. The county commissioners do approve the other elected officials' budgets. So as you can imagine, our elected officials want to provide the best service to our community. Um, and that can create a tension when it comes down to budgeting, right? Um, so that's an interesting check and balance that our constitution, our state constitution put in place um, so that the budgets maybe remain in control. Um, I like to point out that, that often, you know, at the municipal level, you don't see the police chief, um, I, I, I don't want to say fighting, but lobbying the, the city council for more money, right? That's a decision that goes through their hierarchy. That's not a hierarchical structure we have here at the county. So sometimes there are those tensions that are created amongst the um, 10 elected officials, which, which makes it interesting and different. And um, we have some interesting checks and balances that we'll talk about later in class, especially when you talk about the money, how the money comes in um, through property taxes, what the assessor does, what the treasurer does, what the board of county commissioners do. So, um, I'll go over here also really quickly before I move on to the next slide. As I mentioned, the majority of um, Larimer County government organization does fall under the Board of County Commissioners. Um, you'll see that we do have four, actually we have five service categories, um, which are the different colors that you see on your screen. So blue is for public safety. Green is for our community planning infrastructure and resources. Yellow is our human and economic health services. Orange is our public records and information services. And then that gray is the strategic leadership and administrative services. Um, and we're gonna talk about each one of those things throughout the course of Lamar County 101. All right, let's do talk a little bit about county structure. Um, for most purposes, Lamar County acts through its board of county commissioners. This is a three member board and they act by majority vote of the quorum present. So, all you need for a quorum when there's three is two. Um, and what they do is they adopt ordinances in those limited areas which the authority has been given by state legislature. And they adopt resolutions to conduct all other business within the county. These are our three current county commissioners. On the top left, you'll see Commissioner Jody Shattuck McNally. She's the commissioner from District 3. Top right, Kristen Stevens. She is our commissioner from District 2. And the bottom, you have Commissioner John Kafalis, our commissioner from District 1. Now, the interesting thing about commissioner districts is the only people who truly care about those districts are the commissioners. You might wonder why, and that's because we as community members get to vote for all three of them, regardless of where we live. The reason we have three districts is to make sure that they we do not have a board of county commissioners that all comes from one geographical area. You can see how big and diverse Larimer County is, um, but we do know that the majority of our population is centered along the Front Range in Fort Collins and Loveland. Um, and so the hope is that by having three districts, um, we do have some geographical diversity on our board of county commissioners. As you can see from this, it's a little light, so it's hard to see, but basically our districts are horizontal from the top down in Lamar County. Um, this top district, 
district one it incorporates uh red feathers kind of in this area up here and then if you go down where it zooms in it goes to about drake and fort collins and then out timnith is out here as well wellington is up here near i-25 so that's district one with commissioner Kapalas. District two is the middle part of, of the county. So it does include horse tooth, but then kind of the bottom half of Fort Collins. So Drake down to Loveland. And then district three has the majority of our municipalities. So Estes Park, Loveland, Berthoud, portions of Windsor, portions of Johnstown are in district three. Um, and that's commissioner Jody Shattuck McNally. As I said, truly the only people that care are the commissioners that, that have to live in those districts because we get to vote for all three of them regardless. Now that, that being said, commissioners tend to um, be you know, parochial with their districts. So if, if there's a, a resident that comes in that's having a, an issue that happens to live in Wellington, then we tend to have commissioner um, Kofalis, you know, talk to that person and help them through their problem. But that doesn't mean that any of the other two commissioners wouldn't be willing to step in and help out as well. So now you know a little bit about what a county is and who incorporate or who's part of the county organization. Let's talk really briefly about what counties do. So we talked about how our authorities and our powers, again, are from the Constitution and the state statute. So under state statute, counties are primarily responsible for three things, public safety, providing the state's social services, and providing health services. So we'll start with the health services part. Um, here with COVID recently, most people are much more well aware of the health services that Lamar County provides or counties in Colorado provide. This goes, this goes from anywhere from communicable disease, COVID, um, immunizations for things like measles, mumps, rubella. They also do health services for the underserved populations in our community. There is a health clinic that they run for lower income individuals and families. Um, and then they do health services like environmental health. And what most people think of when you think of environmental health is restaurant inspections. So Larimer County does provide the restaurant inspections for the entire county. It doesn't matter if your restaurants in Fort Collins, Loveland, along I-25 in the unincorporated areas, Larimer County um, Department of Health is doing the restaurant inspections um, for those restaurants. They do things like preschool inspections, swimming pool inspections, septic tank inspections. Um, if there were some kind of hazardous spill, maybe a, um, a train you know, derails and spills some type of hazardous chemical, they're gonna be the ones that go in and oversee that cleanup and, and make sure that the public is safe in a healthy way. Um, in addition to health services, Lamar County also provides the social services for the state. So these are what um, mostly the financial assistance that you guys think of. Um, TANF, which most people know is, is welfare um, services, SNAP benefits, which most people also know is food stamps, um, actually child, child protection. Lamar County provides the child protection services. We also offer adult protection services for our, for the older adults in our community. Um, we have our Office on Aging, which provides services again to our older adults and community and helps them get in touch with the services that, that will help them out. Um, so those are kind of the social services that Learmer County provides. And again, we don't just provide those to people in unincorporated areas. We're providing these to everybody in Learmer County, regardless of whether you live in a municipality in the, or in the unincorporated areas. Same with the health services I mentioned earlier. And finally, public safety is a big one that most people don't think about. Well, you are probably familiar with your, well, hopefully not too familiar, but somewhat familiar with your municipal um, law enforcement agency. Um, for example, City of Fort Collins, Fort Collins Police Services, Loveland Police Services. Um, Landmark County actually is, is the majority of the public safety system. So let's pretend that I do something really stupid like, uh, I drink and drive, right? Um, and I get arrested by the Loveland, the Loveland Police Department. They're not going to take me to the Loveland jail because there is no Loveland jail. They're going to take me to the um, Lamar County jail. And hopefully 
um, since I have a clean record and I have not done anything in the past. Once I go to the courts, which again, courts are provided by the 8th Judicial District. Um, Larimer County does provide those courtrooms for the 8th Judicial District. Um, I go to the court and hopefully they're gonna say to me, Michelle, that was really stupid. Luckily you didn't hurt anybody. Instead of sending you to jail or to prison, what we're gonna do is we are going to assign you to one of our alternative sens sentencing programs. Um, and so Larimer County, we'll talk about this more, has one of the most robust alternative sentencing programs in the um, country. Um, you know, I'll go in, maybe they'll sentence me to weekends. So I go in on the weekends and I serve my time on the weekends, or maybe it's during the week, maybe I work on the weekends. So I'll come in during the week and serve my time. Um, but the point of these alternative incarceration programs are so that I can continue leading my life without really disrupting, you know, disrupting my attachment to civil society. If I had to go to jail, I'd probably lose my job. I might, I probably wouldn't be able to pay my mortgage without my job. Um, my family could fall apart if I'm not paying my mortgage and I'm in jail. So the point is to have someone serve the time um, for, for which they have been sentenced to, but also not fully disrupt their life. Um, and then at the end of the program, I'm serve my time and I leave. Now let's say I did something really stupid and I hit someone and someone, someone died in a car accident. Um, and that's a felony, right? So they're probably not gonna say, um, Michelle, let's sentence you to alternative sentencing. They're gonna send me to prison, right? But when I come back to prison, come back from prison, instead of just sending me back out into society where I may not have a job, I may not have a place to live, I'm gonna go through the Larimer County Community Corrections Program. And what that is, is a transitional program. A lot of people kind of think of it as a halfway house, a transitional program to help me reacclimate to society. So in that program, I'm probably going, not I probably, I'm going to get treatment for the alcohol abuse program or alcohol addiction that I would have if I was drunk driving, right? Um, I would go through that. I would also get help getting a job. They would give me help finding a place to live. Um, all those things you need to function in society. Um, so Lamar County provides all of those steps, except for the initial arrest part, right? So public safety is a big part of what Larimer County provides to our entire community. So the three-legged stool, those are those main three things that Larimer County does. Health services, human services, and public safety. Now, um, there are county responsibilities in the unincorporated areas that mimic what a municipality responsibility would be in an incorporated area, right? So roads and bridges. You know that in your municipality, your municipal government is in charge of the roads and the bridges. Same thing for the unincorporated areas. Larimer County is in charge of roads and bridges in the unincorporated areas of Larimer County. Um, land use and planning. So this is the development that happens. Of course, in incorporated areas, councils will have planning commissions, they'll go through land use hearings, much in the same way that um, they do here at the county level. And then finally, law enforcement. We talked about public safety, the public safety system as a whole, but specifically the law enforcement part, um, the sheriff's office does oversee the law enforcement part for the unincorporated areas. And actually some of our smaller municipalities do contract out with our sheriff's office to provide law enforcement in their areas as well. Um, I believe Burfitt is one and Wellington is the other where they, they do not have an independent police service. They contract out through the um, sheriff's office to provide law enforcement in those areas as well. All right, and then finally, we do have some responsibilities we share with the state because why have one level of government when you can have two? Um, some of those things include weed control, restaurant inspections, which I mentioned earlier, liquor licensing, landfill operation, pest control. Um, the best example I think is liquor licensing. So if I wanted to start a bar in the unincorporated parts of Larimer County, I would have to go through the state to get licensed and then I would also have to go through the county to get licensed. So basically permission at the state level and then permission also at the local level. Um, landfill operation is a little bit different. Larimer County has one of the largest, I think we actually have the largest publicly owned landfill in the state. 
However, landfills are governed by um, the state. So while we own a landfill, um, kind of all the rules and regulations that go into having a landfill um, are regulated by the state. So most landfills here in Colorado are private. They're regulated at the state level. So um, our public landfill is regulated in the same way. So final trivia time. Well, that doesn't look quite right, but we will go into final trivia time. I want you to take a few minutes and look through these two columns and guess which two of the following services Larimer County does not provide. And I will give you a hint. There is one in each column. So I'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds, go through, guess which one you think that Larimer County does not provide, and then I will come back and we will go over the final answer. All right, let's give you about 10 more seconds. All right, well, I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these, but what I am gonna go through are what is most commonly, um, the most commonly answered, you know, items um, that people guess that Lamar County doesn't provide. Um, we talk quite a bit about landfill, so typically, People understand that we, we have a landfill as well as child welfare. We do provide child welfare. Septic tank inspections, um, that is something provided by our health department. Um, a lot of people often say, the number one thing people say is purchase of burial plots. And actually, Lamar County does do that. Um, it doesn't happen often, but occasionally we will have individuals in our community that die, um, they're transient or they have no family. They're, there's no one to to own the body afterwards. And so we will purchase burial plots. Our human services department does do that. It's a very small number every year, but we do do it. Job training is actually something provided by our workforce center as part of those state and federal government programs run at the local level. Often people guess fighting forest fires. And actually um, our Larimer County Sheriff is the chief wildland fire official. Um, in Larimer County. So we do have a team of firefighters, forest firefighters that operate now year round. Um, autopsies, we mentioned the coroner very briefly, but the coroner does provide autopsy, autopsies. Victims assistance is provided both through the district attorney and both at the sheriff's office. So the right answer is probation services. And that's a little bit of a trick question because I talked about the public safety system. Um, probation is part of the 8th Judicial District, so a state district. However, we do provide the office space for all of the 8th Judicial District um, program services. So we do provide those office space. It is just not a service of Lamar County. Now, the second, um, the second column, most people guess maternity assistance. And actually, that is a service that is provided by our health department. Um, any new mothers or mothers that need help um, with all the, all the new things that new mothers need to learn, we do have programs that provide free assistance to those individuals. Community-wide recycling, people often say, and we actually do provide community-wide recycling out at our landfill, as well as hazardous waste. I don't think that's on the list. Oh yeah, home hazardous waste disposal. So you can take out your trash, not your trash, your paints, Anything that you, you wouldn't necessarily want to put in a landfill because it's hazardous waste, you can take it out to our hazardous waste disposal or our community-wide recycling out at the landfill. Noxious weed control, we actually do that through um, our natural resources department. Um, veteran services, we provide as well, local veteran services. Mostly we help individuals navigate the federal system, but we do provide some other services as well. Um, birth and death certificates are done through our health department. Um, cable TV supervision, that's a weird one. Most people actually guess it's that one. Um, we actually do provide a minimal level of cable TV supervision. It's done through um, the right of way we own that cable, that cable channels use to put out cable. So we have a, a very small measure of control over, 
um, cable TV supervision. So the right answer for the service we don't provide, again, it's a trick question, it's airports. Now, some counties do provide airport services. Boulder County is one of them. Um, we do have a small airport here located in Larimer County, but the airport is governed by Fort Collins and the city of Loveland. Um, Larimer County does not have any governing authority over our small airport here in Larimer County. In fact, I believe it's called the Fort Collins Loveland Airport. So um, our name isn't even in there. So with that, all of these services Larimer County provides except for those two things, and I'm going to give you even a bigger picture. Um, this is a not in fully encompassing list of all the different programs and services that Larimer County provides. Some of these services we provide to unincorporated areas. The majority of our, of our services, I believe it's 80% of our services, we provide countywide. So it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter if you are in Estes or near Wellington or you're in that sliver of Johnstown or Windsor that's in Lamar County. We provide the majority of these services to you. Um, and these are important services like elections and public safety and planning and zoning. Um, and it's, it's important for you as residents to know what Larimer County does so that you can properly engage um, as the top part of that organizational structure or that organizational chart we saw earlier, you do see community members. Um, and, and it's kind of your duty as a community member to understand how county government works so you can understand you know, who you're voting for, why you're voting for them, what, what are their ideals around these services. Um, that's kind of your role as a community member. Um, and I hope you learned a little bit more about um, county government today and Larimer County government in general. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, my email address is m, as in Michelle, bird, B-I-R-D, at Larimer.org. Um, I'm happy to, to help you out, talk more about county services and programs or, or get you where you need to be. So with that, thank you for joining us today and we will hopefully see you soon.